A few days ago, this is what the west side of our home looked like. Now, this is what we're working with. We have a lot to do, so let's get started. Welcome back, Cajun family. Gus, you look so skinny now. You a little skinny boy? You get a little cheering, huh? Okay, here's the chicken coop and Last year, there was a few blackberries back here. What you thinking? <laughs> Whenever it's actually time to blackberry pick, we have to pick so fast because Lad is sitting there eating them as fast as we can pick them. <laughs> she loves blackberries. I can't blame her, I do too. Well, here. Where'd you find that one at? You remember how last year there were some right behind the chicken coop? Yep. That's where they were. Chicken berries. Chicken berries. Good. Now that you got your breakfast in. <laughs> yeah. Man, that one berry, I am stuffed. What? <laughs> As y'all can see, we have a plethora of tools here this morning, which means that we are going to start laying out for the posts that are going to be supporting this porch. So between us and WAGS, the dirt doctor, we were able to get all of this dirt put in place. It's roughed in, but it needs to settle. It needs to have a few rains on it. You can get out here with a packer and pack it and pack it and pack it, and then it'll rain and then it'll still settle. So we're just gonna cut out the middleman. We're gonna give it some time, but there are some things that we can do, like Lydia said, while we're waiting on this to pack. We're gonna use this stuff, lay out where our posts are gonna be because we do live in hurricane country. And this is gonna be a big open structure. So if we get a hurricane, we wanna do everything that we can to try to make sure that this thing does not move. And if it does, we know that we've done everything that we could to secure it the best we could. That's been our mentality the whole time on this house build. As y'all remember, we put in hurricane clips. We went ahead and anchor bolted all the corners in. We used that little gun hootus that shot them, <laughs> that shot them nails through the wood into the concrete. We've done everything to help prevent any damage from the hurricanes. Heck, we've even stocked our pond this time. Last time we had to use it to bath. This time we can use it for fishing. And <laughs> we are smart enough to know that if some catastrophic event happens and we get a tornado, if it's a really bad hurricane, you're gonna get some kind of damage. We just really wanna do everything that we could to make that as minimal as possible. And even sometimes with your best efforts, you're still gonna have some kind of catastrophe. But over the past several years, right here where we live, the actual eye of multiple hurricanes has came through here. So we're keeping that in the back of our mind with every decision that we make on this house. And whenever it came through last time, we left, we had Ladley, she was six weeks old. Whenever we got back, we didn't have water for five weeks and we didn't have electricity for eight weeks. Hence us wanting to go completely off grid. We know that there can be damages that are gonna happen to the solar, that we know that those things can happen. But if we have some battery systems, if we have some solar systems, we can rig something up enough that surely before eight weeks, we can get some electricity <laughs> back on our home. I have that much faith in us anyway. Great work, honey. <laughs> Thanks. You getting hungry yet? Can't touch this. You can't touch this. You can't touch this. Okay, so that's my MC Hammer impersonation. I think it's more like this. 
<laughs> probably just build a porch instead of dancing. Don't come here for dancing lessons, let me tell you something. <laughs> Not what this channel is about. <laughs> Okay, so maybe we are, but we obviously just need to take some lessons from the lad. We got the stakes driven in by the house, and they're two and a half inches to the top dead center of this stake. The run going away from the house is going to be 40 feet from the house. That's what we're doing now. We're trying to get these lines pulled from stake to stake. So now what we're going to do is we're going to pull straight away from this house 40 feet. And we like to use a square and then stretch the tape measure across the square. That's if you have something square to work from. We've got a lot of comments in the past asking us why we don't use the three, four, five method. What's the three, four, five method? <laughs> also, you're giving us a lot of credit because you're saying that our house is straight. <laughs> our house is straight. Our house is, that is one thing. Whenever we <laughs> measure this whole thing, I think one side might've been off a 16th or an eighth? It was an eighth. An eighth. It was only of an eighth. I think most of that was luck, by the way. <laughs> but anyway, the three, four, five method is you pull three foot this way, four foot that way, and the measure from end point to end point should be five feet. And we can't use a laser level because it's too bright out. I guess if we were doing this at nighttime, that would work <laughs> out perfect for us, but too sunny today. So what I do is I just take some kind of square when you have a building to come off of, put this flat against the building. And when you stretch your tape measure out beside it, it gets you pretty close in the ballpark. And after we get the stakes temporarily driven in the ground, we'll measure from corner to corner to make sure the lengths are exactly the same. So what you're saying is, it's a hootus. <laughs> yeah, this is a get you slab square hootus. Or T-square, or sheetrock hootus. This thing has so many, we have used this thing. Mr. Stafford got us that off our Amazon wish list. <laughs> and sir, if you're still watching, we surely do appreciate this because we have used this as many hootuses as we have been able to think of. <laughs> we have definitely got our use out of this so far. With a long way to go. Jim is currently behind me and what he's doing is taking that pink string and he's gonna run it from one stake to the next stake. Now the reason that we're gonna do this is well, that's gonna make a true straight line. And in order to get these posts that we need for the structural support of the trusses for our porch, we need to be able to concrete these posts in the ground. In total, we're gonna have eight support posts, four on each side. What we've ultimately decided is that every nine and a half foot starting from the house is gonna be a post. That means that it's gonna be 38 foot in total, which means that our last post is gonna leave two foot of overhang on the very end, which is perfectly fine. That's what we did on the front porch was leave that two foot of overhang, so that's gonna be perfect for us. So once we mark these up, we'll be ready for the next step, which is gonna be concreting our posts in the ground. Now when she says post, we mean pipe. <laughs> Steel, heavy wall, really really heavy pipe and we're going to concrete that stuff into the ground and then we're going to pour our slab around it and then we're going to come up and we're going to put some more metal and we're going to weld and then we're going to weld some more and then we're going to weld after that so like we said hurricane proof
pair eyewear, I would try to find glasses that went with every style and every color, but now with pair eyewear, the options are endless for styling my eyewear. Thanks to today's sponsor, Pair Eyewear. Pair Eyewear is a revolutionary eyewear brand that is changing how the world wears glasses. Their site has many options for all styles of eyewear and you can see what suits you best by using their virtual try-on. The process is simple. All you have to do is pick your frames, pick your magnetic top frames, and if you're like me, enter in your prescription. Glasses are absolutely not cheap, but with pair eyewear, they are very affordable. If I went to go get a pair of sunglasses that were prescription and two sets of glasses, that would cost me hundreds of dollars. But with pair eyewear, I have them all in one. The glasses that I chose were the Reese and the Pink Clear. I also got a black sun top for sunglasses and the Almond Blossom Split to add a fun touch of color. Plus, with their simple online process, I didn't even have to leave my home. Click the link in the description to get 15% off of your first pair. Thank you, Pair Hour, for sponsoring this video. Now like every other day around here, it has taken us forever to get everything gathered up this morning. So we ran over to Pops, borrowed the torch, always nice to be able to borrow a torch when you need it. And we're gonna have to gather up some more supplies. We're gonna get some bricks, we're gonna get some heavy wall three inch drill stem for posts. We're gonna bring those up here, cut them to length, and get this thing going. Once we got our eyes on the metal that we needed, we wasted no time switching out the bucket on the tractor for the spear. There are a few pieces of metal we needed to move off the pipe before we could start hauling the pipe up to the house.
The pipe length that we need is at least 12 foot. We want two foot to go in the ground and we want 10 foot to be out of the ground. We have a total of eight posts that we need to build, so that means that we needed at least four pieces of this pipe. All right, y'all, we're gonna try and make real quick work of this because we do have rain coming in. It is sprinkled on us just a little bit, but not enough to stop what we're doing. We're gonna try and knock this out this afternoon. So that way, whenever the rain comes, it'll help settle all this in even more. Even though these cuts don't really need to be straight because they're gonna have to be trimmed again in the future anyway, it does make it easier when you're cutting to have a good straight line to follow. So we have our cardboard wrap around here. Very sophisticated stuff. And this will get us in the ballpark to make a nice neat line all the way around here. That way I don't have to wonder where I'm cutting whenever the fire starts flying. Oh, I meant cardboard straight pipe cutting hootas. That's more like it. <laughs> so you're the fire, you're the flare, you're the song inside my head. And I will taste every Feels so good when you're in my head And you're the fire, you're the flare You're the song inside my head And I will taste every note Feels so good when you're in my head And it's the road I figured and the curse I've been living the flag I'm given a signal Pick me up, pick me up again Come on, pick me up now so You're the fire, you're the flare You're the song inside my head And I will taste every note Feel so Mother Nature yet again sending a black cloud directly over us. So moving quickly into the next step, we started to drill some holes. Where do you want to start at? Let's start over here at the orange mark. Oh, really? <laughs> it's about as good of instructions as you gave me the other day trying to find that handle. Good, clear, concise instruction. Hey. Direction, whatever. While I'm thinking about it, somebody asked if you knew what kind of card that came off of. An old one. I bet it was a truck. Probably had four to six tires on it. I would say it was gasoline powered by the date and age. It... By the scratches left on the handle? <laughs> yeah. That handle looked like it had scratches on it from like a back in the day working man. You know? Or maybe it was somebody's Momo's car. Could have been. Hey, Momo's was rough back in the day. <laughs> well, one plus for go ahead and digging these holes is this dirt hasn't had time to set up really hard yet. When this stuff sets up, it's like drilling through concrete. So at least we have that going for us. We want to dig these about two foot in the ground. And right here on the top of this is about two foot. So that's what we're going to guesstimate our hole size to.
the rest of these will have to just get pieces. It's a sad day here at Cajun Country Living whenever we're scrounging around the neighborhood to find little bits and pieces of brick because we didn't plan accordingly and buy a handful of bricks or rocks or whatever. So we ended up with a piece of little rocks of brick. What we're going to use these bricks for is we're going to drop one of these. The smaller ones, we're going to drop a couple of these in the center of the hole. When we set the pipe down into the hole, the hole will be sitting on this brick. Then we pour the concrete around it, the pipe won't be sitting in the actual dirt. One of the big reasons I don't like to concrete pipe in the ground and let it actually touch the ground is just because of the corrosion. After a while, it can corrode and expand break the concrete around the pipe and eventually you have a problem and we just don't want that to happen. Hey, do y'all remember that rain we were talking about earlier? Guess what? Even though the rain set in, we knew that it would be our last chance for a while to get these posts in the ground. And I know that I'm not going to melt, but we'll see about Jim Wayne. Here we are again with our favorite product, <laughs> Quick Creek. In the rain. Please sponsor us. <laughs> yeah, send us an umbrella. I'm actually shocked right now that it has not started downpouring on us because this cloud over here to this side is dark. So, we're gonna try and make quick work of this. We are gonna be dry pouring our concrete into our post holes. <sighs> I'm tired, y'all. I'm getting there myself. <laughs> Man, this rain has wore me out. It comes in, it makes you all nervous because it starts drizzling and you think that the bottom's gonna fall out because it's this huge black cloud. And then all of a sudden, poof, the cloud's gone. And then it's just, I don't know what temperature is, but it is hot, it is humid, wet, sweaty, no breeze. I think this God. is the first time that we've ever complained on camera. I think so. What is happening? Oh, snap out of it. <laughs> okay, today, y'all, we got this quick creek right here. We are gonna put this in these post holes and my golly, we're gonna love it. 